ولكن تشعر انه انت قدرت توصل صوت هذا هاي الناس على الاقل للعالم Everybody. Welcome back to Greenlight is a Radar. We're finally back here. Yes, actually it's been a while. It really has and we've been working really hard these past couple of weeks. But we are finally back here and we are back with so much enthusiasm, aren't yes. we? Because today's topic is quite a special and important one. And we're just super excited to discuss it with you, to give you stories, to conduct interviews. It's just very exciting, especially for students like us, this topic is is quite the important one so we're gonna get into that in a second initially allow us to introduce ourselves so my name is Renim Leila and I'm Leanne Denise and welcome back to a new episode so this episode is something that we've been like wanting to do a long time ago s- like since we ever started the podcast yeah. um, so we're finally doing this episode and it's about journalism so today we're gonna be talking about journalists and the challenges they actually face while doing their work so as we know like journalists and human rights defenders are around the world actually face risks because of what they do and because like a result of their work actually yeah. so like governments and powerful actors would actually because they're trying to hide the truth so they're seeking to kind of escape the truth and that this actually often is respond to like critical reporting with actually uh, let's say attempts to silence them uh, so they could silence them with like threats surveillance attacks arrests and in like the most grave cases actually enforced like disappearance or maybe killing and are often actually the cause of telling the truth and reporting the truth. Quite a brutal cost, yes. that is. I mean, the protection of journalists and those human defenders and sort of ending the impunity against attacking them is generally like a global priority at the moment. It's a, it's like it's a priority because we need the safeguarding for the freedom of expression yeah. because a free and active civil society are essential to ensure public's right to know. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Like, uh, don't they is... have the right to know? Yes. And to sort of like make sure that institutions can be held accountable. Yeah. So because this is such a huge episode, we thought about actually having parts of about like each country yeah. or like Middle Eastern countries. So starting with Palestine, especially Gaza, actually, according to the committee, to protect the journalist CBJ in an interview that they conducted with the New Yorker SPJ president Jody Ginsburg said in this war actually has been the deadliest conflict for journalists that CBJ has ever recorded in terms of actually documenting the attacks on yeah. journalist and press. Yeah, I mean, for some context, nearly as many journalists have been killed in the past two months in Gaza as the worldwide amount of journalists killed in 2022, the entire year on yeah. its own. So isn't it, that like crazy? The, Definitely. At this point, it's not just it's not that it's not just that journalists are being killed anymore. Journalists are actually now explicitly being targeted, yes. and it's almost everywhere. It's not just in Gaza anymore. And there's like another example on October 13th, actually, an Israeli strike like in Lebanon, actually not in Gaza this time, killed journalist, a journalist called Hassan Abdullah and injured six other journalists that were with him. And according to Amnesty International assert that the Israeli strike was most likely deliberate and therefore a war crime. Israel has said that the strike was in an active zone combat and the incident is apparently under. <laughs> this is an excuse. Uh, yeah, it's um, like I submitted a report. <laughs> yeah. And also another accident, another thing that happened is not an accident. On November 21st, a reporter called Farah Umar and her cameraman actually, Rabia Mamari, from from Al Maidan TV, they were working in Be- actually channel in, Be- in Beirut. Were killed in Lebanon, according to Al Maidan TV again. An Israeli warplane actually fired two rockets on them. Like imagine how huge of a thing this is. And yeah, and according to like the Lebanese Meyer Minister, the Prime Minister Najib Miqati, he said that Israel's goal is actually to silence and silence the media that export exposes its crimes and attacks. Which is crazy. Like, they're they're just murdering them for trying to show the truth. Yes. It's, 
Exactly. Because like journalists in the region have actually continued to work even though their families were actually also at risk. So the best example I could give here is actually Al Jazeera Arabic's chief, the Gaza chief actually, Wa'il Dahdu. After he actually, like in October, he was he learned that his wife, his son, his daughter and his grandson actually have been killed, had been killed in an like Israeli airstrike. And on Friday, we like, it's really new actually, it's really recent, that Dahdu himself actually was wounded and Al Jazeera journalist Samir Abu Daqqa was actually killed by Israeli drone strikes as well in the same area, in the same media outlet reporters were. Which, yeah. which is so frightening. Can you imagine hearing the loss of your entire family all at once and then, as you know, you're doing your job? Definitely. And then like Samir Abdullah had like a son called Zain and he had this song that went so viral on like social media of a song that he was like singing to his father as well. And when like you listen to it as if he was like, I don't know if it, it was just like preparing him for what's coming. And it's like, if we think about it, these are not just like journalists. These are people who have stories, who have like families, who have a lot of other things and like who have like dreams. They're not numbers. They actually have something to deliver to the world. And it's so sad to just like see it happen. See their lives to go away exactly. like this. See them yeah. like, see their lives being taken away as they're doing their job, as they're trying not only to provide for their families, but to also show the truth, show yes. the world what's happening in their home countries. Let's give another example of another journalist for Al Jazeera Arabic. We have Anas Al-Sharif who reported that he was receiving threats from the Israeli military yeah. to stop his work. Okay, so they're trying to stop his work. Why? We wonder why. Um, last week, his family's home in the Jabalia refugee camp was hit in a strike. And unfortunately, his 90-year-old father was killed. Yeah. Along with God knows how many other people. That's just like unbelievable sometimes. Yeah. Like, imagine just like, imagine that like Anas was like reporting in the field and then you get such a news. It's like so heartbreaking and they're still actually doing these jobs and they're still fighting because they have a message to let to like deliver to the people and that's such a great like honor message to deliver i read this quote on instagram which really touched my heart it's like none of us can handle the loss of a family member so imagine getting a phone call that your entire family was martyred it's 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 actually it's so heartbreaking and like you know what in the majority of these cases which actually is like unbelievable like the majority of these cases these journalists would would be like driving in vehicles that like have like tv written on them or like press or like they could be wearing clothing uh, that actually show and like identify like themselves as press Uh, so they actually know they're they're just trying to target them as well yeah and now that we're talking about press i want to talk about a very important story about a very important person who left her fingerprint not just in the field of journalism alone but in the whole entire Entire planet for somebody who has been amplifying and telling untold stories for the, her entire life we owe it to her to retell her story and share it and disseminate it as much as we possibly can yeah so I so, want to talk about yeah, even guess about what we're talking about like the person we I think everyone knows who we're gonna I be think talking about now who we're gonna yeah. be talking about on the on 11th of May 2022 we woke up to the news that Shirin Abu Akhla was this was actually assassinated by the Israeli soldiers. Yeah. And this was just a, such a shocking news. Honestly, Shirin's main focus in her life was to tell the stories of, you know, people whose stories are untold behind the news. You know, they're always just behind. They're never on the camera. Her point was to always talk about them. There was no such thing as a small story yeah. for Shirin. She would always rise above and beyond. She was genuinely an example of a journalist to look up she to. She was such an inspiring person. She really, really was. And Shirin had a massive influence and admiration from the Palestinian community. In fact, no, she had a huge like you know she has so much admiration from the entire from the planet, whole world exactly from the whole entire planet and unfortunately Shirin is not the first and probably not the last journalist who this will happen to because this is not the first time and it's just been happening again and again time and time journalists in Gaza specifically or in Palestine they're targeted for just being journalists the yeah. israeli soldiers are trying to suppress palestinian voices and narratives yeah and like i think it's not just about like 
Palestinian narratives as well as in Yemen, as we're talking about different yeah, countries and Middle in many East. other countries. It's that happening in true. many other countries as well as in like Yemen. The Yemeni uh, syndicate actually published a report in May, which stated that 49 journalists and like media members were killed since 2011, which is a huge number if you think about it. And with the murder this month that happened to Haidari, uh, the total actually became 50 journalists. Those who are killed are like journalists, they're photographers, and majority of whom are actually independent. So they're working like as independent uh, journalists. In addition, what is actually known as the Arab Spring is actually a protest movement that started in Tunisia and then spread quickly to Libya and both Yemen and then Syria. Both of like these four or five countries actually spread to all of these countries. And talking about Syria, actually, Syria is one of the several countries that experienced a popular uprising in the early months of 2011. As like, according to reporters without borders, actually, Syria ranks among the 175 out of 180 on its press freedom index, which is unbelievable. Like, imagine how crazy and how like bad it could be to report in such a country with actually more than uh, 270 Syrian journalists killed since the country's conflict began in 2011. Yeah, I mean, this makes like a decade later, all of these incidents and things have made like the Middle East such a dangerous place for media. Like these countries, they're just becoming really, really dangerous. And as the protests have descended into civil war and rival groups, Mm -hmm. let's say, and they newly installed authoritarian leaders now, again, target journalists. They're targeting the journalists. Yes. And actually, according to a data done by CJP, which is the Committee to Protect Journalists, in total, there's actually 189 journalists from these four countries after the Arab Spring and after what happened were actually killed because either they're like covering the protests or reporting on what was happening on like the resulting conflict that continued from the past 10 years. Part of the Biden administration and its past pledges to support the (laughs) freedom of expression actually on december 10th cnn's reporter jake toppler asked the secretary of state Antony belkin about the death toll of palestinian journalists supposedly killed by the adf strikes now we know who actually killed them but supposedly for the usa it's supposedly um belkin actually said that we want to make sure that that's investigated we actually hope it is and what we understand that like we want to understand that what's happening is what has happened actually and that there is a accountability held for whoever did this and what a nothing burger of a response actually <laughs> literally yeah so as cpj has reported yeah there has never there has never been true accountability for israel when it comes to journalist killings and the consequences are just devastating the slaughter of palestinian journalists it's sort of like an erasure of those attempting to record the first draft of history in yeah. gaza like because like uh, the destruction actually of the art and archives is like literally the same as like killing journalists mm-hmm. because killing journalists is actually an insult and in memory of the truth and the palestinian culture itself mm-hmm. and as for the term journalist, it designates, according to according to a 1975 draft UN convention, any correspondent, reporter, photographer, their technical film, radio, and television assistants who are like ordinary who ordinarily engage in any of these activities as their principal occupation. And as we're talking about the UN, upon the UN's article actually number 79, it formally states that journalists engaged in dangerous professional missions such as reporting in zones of armed conflicts are civilians uh, which means like when you are a civilian it actually means that you should be treated as a civilian Mm. and just have all the rights yeah and as such they enjoy the full scope of sort of protection that is given and granted to civilians under the international humanitarian law but they don't actually get this like if we are talking about it if you're like facing the reality Uh, they're not being treated in this way such as like want to talk more about like the journalists in the field now actually like Matazazaize, Bisan, Balasya who actually got a lot of threats and she had to leave the country because of like the threats she was getting and because she was so scared for her own like family's lives as well so yeah and also I think that it's not just in journalism. I think it's also in the media. Yeah, and 
I think it's fair to say that, you know, being a journalist in the Middle East brings with it many challenges. And one of the key issues, like you just said, that is for, you know, when it comes to journalists and media consumers is the relative lack of media yeah. freedom. Mm -hmm. And actually, when you think about it, this sometimes drives conversations into even more controlled environments. Yeah. And like I think it's just because, like the systems are actually biased yeah so it's like it's just actually like cent centered into like some type of it's a system where actually it is biased so it's centered into a direction to actually hide the truth mm -hmm. and we can't actually see it because of what's happening now yeah it can even result into like self-censorship or sort of privacy like censorship due to what is can like what is considered as safe to be said in the public domain yeah. and, and such a now like yeah. the the news that are being like uploaded into like instagram and social media we see them actually but a lot of the content is being being hidden because they mark it as like sensitive content mm -hmm. even sometimes when it doesn't really have sensitive content even when like someone it is still be revealing labeled. the truth so for labeled. them truth is actually a yeah. sensitive content yeah and the fact that you know most of these social networks do get blocked or banned because of sensitive content that is not actually sensitive is i think one of like it also adds to these to these key yeah. issues so i don't know if we can call this freedom or Freedom, basically. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, to end this episode with, actually, we want to spice this topic a little bit more. And we want to hear from an expert, actually, our guest. We're going to dive into a deeper parts of this issue. And we're going to discuss it more so in the sure next to part. follow up with us because we, we still have a lot to talk about. So, so we'll see you in the interview. To actually develop a further and more accurate understanding of what it is like to be a journalist in the Middle East, Today, we are joined by Dr. Omar al Ghazi, an assistant professor in the Department of Media and Communication at the London School of Economics. And he is also the editor in the Middle East Journal of Culture and Communication and the previous lecturer in journalism at the University of Sheffield. So, thank you so much for joining our podcast today. It's such an honor to have you on it. Pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, so, to start with, I guess we have like some questions that we would like to ask you about being a journalist. You are an expert and you have your own experiences about the topic so we'd like to start with some questions to dive into this interview with you we actually have talked about some difficulties that journalists go through and some challenges as well and upon the human rights uh, journalists are actually protected but do you see this in real life how do you think this is like what do you think is the reason behind uh, the risks of journalists uh, journalists in the middle east go through okay so journalism in the in the middle east and north africa is a very difficult profession and practice, and there are several reasons for that. Uh, some of it is political in the sense that the uh, media environment in, in a lot of this region is, is very restricted. Most media outlets are government controlled, and therefore the, there is little freedom of speech in, in that sense which obviously restricts the kind of journalism that can be done. And so that is, so the kind of risks around, around freedom, around surveillance, about what can be talked about and, and what cannot is a challenge. There is also an economic challenge because, and here it depends where we're, we're talking about, but in much of the Middle East and North Africa, if we're talking about the, the Levant countries, Iraq, Egypt, and much of North Africa, and there are also huge economic problems. It is actually very difficult to find a job in um, in news media and in journalism. And in many of the mainstream outlets, the pay is, is very little. So it is becoming increasingly difficult, you know, to to live on a journalist salary in a lot of Arab countries. And when when there is little choice, or when when there are few jobs, there's also little choice on where one can work which also compromises kind of the, the ability of journalists to, to rock the boat, to kind of uh, do their watchdog function, uh, because one has to think of their livelihood and the livelihood of, of their families. So economic problems are, are also a big factor. And of course, we have to think about the, the, the fundamental human right, and, you know, which is protected in international law, which is for the safety of journalists to do their to do their jobs and this also as 
as you know, and you know, everyone who's, who's watching would um, know, uh, particularly now with kind of the war in, in Gaza and this genocidal campaign that is that is happening there. We've seen, I think, almost like it is, I think the figure now is, is more than 90 journalists have been targeted and killed. Um, and so this, the safety of journalists is, is also paramount. And when it, like in Gaza, we see it, we see the killing of journalists, we see the targeting of their families, really very painful, painful context and, and you know, crimes against humanity that are happening there, breaches of international law in in the way that journalists are killed. And this is this is a, a precedent that unfortunately makes makes it difficult to, to talk about journalists elsewhere, because now that there's apparent impunity in targeting journalists in, in this way. It endangers journalists everywhere, whether in the Middle East or outside the Middle East, because now it seems like journalists are, are fair play and they're being killed in a really gruesome way, not only them, but, but their families. So that like the the risk to life is, is obviously is obviously the biggest challenge. Like journalists often say no story is more important than than your life. But how can we kind of take that quote and think about let's say the the reporting of, of Gaza where telling the world about what's what's happening there becomes a matter of, of life and death. So there are there are multiple challenges, but of course, since we're speaking now, this is what's mostly on my mind and I think a lot of our minds. So I want to ask you, as an expert and somebody who has done so much research you know, on the topic of journalism, I would like to ask you, is there like a common sort of like burden or like a common challenge that most like journalists face? Like, have you observed something that all of them have in common? Like, it doesn't have to be a negative thing. Like, just what is one thing that something that journalists go through that the public doesn't necessarily understand or know about? Because, you know, like for the public, journal journalists are just those who are trying to document everything but there's definitely at least some challenges in their lives that we don't know about is there something common have you noticed between journalists from your I think like I think what is what is common often when people want to express frustration let's say on media coverage they would say the media this the media that without without understanding also the challenges that journalists themselves go through a lot of journalists you know feel a lot of pressure from their from their editors from the editorial line of of their media organization and as i said before especially when there is no like not a lot of jobs in in media um individual people don't have so much kind of agency in the overall coverage which is you know not not to not to kind of excuse complicity in a in a sense but i think it is important to in also encourage journalists to be courageous and and brave in their reporting because a, a lot of because speaking out sometimes going against your bosses actually comes at a great cost to to oneself to one's job and so it is about kind of appreciating good journalism in addition and encouraging people to empowering journalists to to speak out rather than just lumping all media together especially that even in the best circumstances they work under a lot of a lot of pressures time pressures and other kinds of pressures so it is not an, an easy job per se especially when it is kind of ex expected to to be like to 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 fulfill its function of, of being a watchdog of speaking truth to power etc so upon what you were talking about, I want to ask something about freedom of speech. I think there's like a thin line between people accepting what you're saying and then like standing against what, what you're saying. So in journalism, what is a line between freedom of speech and actually like having like reaching a point where you're going to be asked about what you're talking about? Like what is a, a line between like expressing your ideas without actually being in danger? Like what is the point? between these points what is something we can learn? yeah like the line the line is is always it's a matter of, of debate so and it varies from one country to, to another like there is you know freedom like freedom of speech is necessary but also like one should always ask why would i want that freedom like if if it is let's say more inclined to to be like a form of hate speech or to target minorities like we see for example in in 
Scandinavian countries, like even even acts like burning or destroying religious books, sometimes claim to be freedom of speech. Freedom of speech shouldn't be like the, the purpose isn't just to have that that freedom to do whatever you want. It is in a context, in a context of power, of law, of morals, of you know, social cohesion. All of these go go into it. And generally, when it when it becomes a hate speech, it is not tolerated anymore. But of course, this all depends on the context that that you're thinking about, because it's very hard to to make blanket statements that that apply apply everywhere. And to me personally, in my research, I I always think how that relates to power within a, a particular political context um, to think about like how is how can we critically think about um, that line that, that you asked about? How can we critically think of freedom of speech, its limits, its rationale, its reasons, its necessity? But in general, if one if one wants to kind of speak about journalism values for journalism to thrive, there must be a, a level where people are able to express themselves. And generally, if you live in a society where you find yourself disagreeing with, with someone, it is good to remind yourself that, okay, at least I, I live somewhere that disagreement is actually uh, protected. And there is kind of like a minimum level of, of freedom where that exchange can, can happen. So that's something for all of us to remember. I want to ask this, like, I want to try to take a little more positive side. So what do you think makes a perfect journalist? Like we talked about, you know, the fact of needing bravery and courage to actually you know, talk about some important issues. But like, what, what other characteristics do you think make a successful journalist? And what are like the advantages, disadvantages of this whole occupation? Um, yeah, like to me, perhaps the best way to say it is courageous journalists because that is that is really like kind of a, a value that is often understated these are the journalists that that you know really have an, an impact on on society it is when when they're brave and courageous and and willing to 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 risk to to risk their their livelihood and unfortunately sometimes their their lives to bring attention to to injustice anywhere so I have another question. What do you think are some di differences actually between reporting in the Middle East and reporting in the Western countries that you could? Make? So ge generally, I as I answered in the first question, like there are particular problems to do with like whether political problems or economic problems that are more pronounced in in the Middle East. But again, I think we. It is difficult to generalize because it depends on the topic as well. Like now we, we see, let's say, with the coverage of, uh, of Palestine and, and Gaza, that w Western media can, can be as restrictive and as, you know, we basically as, as far away from truth and accuracy as media in authoritarian countries. So it really depends on, on the context as well of particular stories. But generally... In the Middle East and North Africa, like the, I think the economic and political problems are, are kind of uh, compounded in many ways. And I have one last question for you. So in your perspective, how do you see the landscape of journalism evolving? Like your research and, research and experience in this field, how do you think journalism would evolve in the future? Um, of course, like a lot of the literature now is focused on technology and how the technology, whether it is now, of course, AI and artificial intelligence is kind of getting a lot of attention in how it may be incorporated in news production and, and news writing. But also like there's the, the issue of, of dissemination. Many people, especially young people, now access news on social media and Social media itself keeps changing in terms of whether it's the, the algorithm or the preference of, of what platform to be used. So it's a very fast changing terrain. And while we've got kind of that technological environment, we also see that, and this is kind of more in line with, with my research, that the question of the flesh of, you know, like the, the, the embodiment of, of journalism continues to be very relevant as journalists, even, you know, like in whether... We saw this in Syria, we see this in Gaza, that to get the message out in the world, we see journalists, digital journalists, basically having to endanger their lives and, and put their lives on the line for us 
the audience to have actually exposure and knowledge of, of what's going on somewhere. So while there is kind of this important debate about, about technology, the flesh and blood of journalism is, is still as important as, as ever. I really appreciate that you helped us and you brought to you your expertise and your research with us. So we'd like to thank you so much in advance for joining us in our podcast today. And I guess that concludes our third episode of for journalism now. for now. Stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see. See you.